Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this 28th day of May. And it is Tuesday, and we are winding down the month. We have about four or five more days left to go, and then uh, Saturday is going to be the first of the month. And so, uh, I believe it's Saturday. Let me double check here. Um, yep, Saturday will be June 1st. So we have one, two, three, four more days left of this month. And then we go into the month of June. Wow. So, and uh, so today's topic is titled "The Lord Hears." So He sure does when we pray to Him. He hears, and sometimes He'll answer our prayers. Sometimes it takes a while for Him to answer, and sometimes He might not answer the way we would like Him to answer. But uh, He will uh, get those prayers answered one way or another. And He might hold off answering a particular prayer because He might be keeping you for something that could harm you. And all that, so we need to understand that it's uh, in His will that He answers these prayers, and so we don't always know how to pray as we ought to, but we have the Holy Spirit that prays for us, so praise the Lord for that, and going to God and taking to Him and explaining to Him what we mean when we're praying to Him, so have all that there, so amen. All right, so we'll get into that topic here in a few minutes, but first I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and he too can be your Lord and Savior today if he's not already. And that's the most important thing you can ever do is call on Jesus to save your soul. But of course, first you need to realize who he is and why he came down to this earth and how he died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day according to scripture. And if you don't know who he is and you're not convinced that he can save your soul, well, it's time to be convinced. So if you get that prick in your heart, don't ignore it. But uh, respond to it, and and uh, to know who God is is good and, and important. So, all right. So make sure you understand that today, and uh, get in the Bible and read it, and see who Jesus is and what He did on the cross. How He wants to be reconciled with you today. And if you're saved, hopefully you keep on keeping on with the Lord and growing in the faith and all that, and getting into a good Bible believing church if you're not in one already, and hearing God's word preached and taught to you and doing something with uh, it not just letting it go one in in one in uh, in one ear and out the other so and uh wanting to grow and learn and have a desire to um please the lord and show him how much you love him by being obedient and all that so that comes after being saved and then to go out and be a bold witness and tell others about what jesus and what he did for them and for you so all right, so let's go ahead now and we'll get into the scripture song for today, which is from Proverbs 12, 21. And let's see here if there's any context around these verses. Some are have context with them, some don't. So, But it's always good to read the book of Proverbs, and you can do a Proverbs a day throughout the month. And uh, so let's go ahead here and look at this particular Proverbs here, Proverbs 12, and see what we have here. So... Um, verse, what was it, verse 21. Okay, so, uh, 21. All right, so it doesn't look like there's uh, any uh, thing before or after that, but we'll read the verse before it. And it says here in verse 20, it says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, right? But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. And then the scripture song verse for today uh, is evil pursueth sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid, and then um, so on and so forth. Uh, different um, little proverbs here throughout the um, chapter. Oh, I'm reading chapter uh, 13. Sorry, I was on the wrong chapter there. That's what. All right, so you got some uh, from chapter 13 too. So chapter 12 and verse 21. Let's look here. So 12:21. All right, so let's see. So verse 20. Uh, all right, so there's... So 20 is speaking of something different a little bit, but um, we'll read 20 anyway. And it says here, Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. And then, of course, our verse today, which I thought was... I was reading the wrong chapter here, so this is the actual scripture song verse for today. Which says, There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. And so on and so forth. Different uh, little proverbs here. 
Uh, verse 22 says, Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. Amen. So, a, little, a couple extra verses there for you for today, including those ones from chapter 13, which I read on accident and thought it was in chapter 12. But All right, so you got some more um, verses there from Proverbs 12 and 13. And now let's go ahead and sing the scripture song for today from Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Sing along with them, and then we'll get into the topic. So here we go. Proverbs 12, 21. There shall, there shall no, no evil happen to the just, just but the wicked, wicked shall, shall be filled with mischief. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. That's right, so let's uh, be just and not um, be filled with mischief. So, And uh, put that back to yesterday's, and we'll do those scripture songs again towards the end of the broadcast. But now it's time to get into today's topic for the Baptist Bread. For Tuesday, May 28th, 2024, and it's titled, The Lord Hears, and we have 1 Samuel 7, 9b, and I'll read this to you, and then we'll go and get into the context here a little bit, and uh, give you uh, the chapter and what's going on there, and it looks like it's um, explained in the topic uh, also, So, but we'll go ahead and read the chapter in its entirety, uh, if it's not too long of a chapter, and give you some um, context of what's going on here in this particular chapter chapter 7 of 1st Samuel so verse 9b says Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel and the Lord heard him so praise the Lord that the Lord heard Samuel when he cried unto Israel and I hope he hears us when we cry unto our people those that are um, living in mischief and wickedness and that the uh, Lord would be continually merciful for them and for um, this uh, nation uh, that they would repent and turn to the Lord so here we go. This is First Samuel 7. And let's see. There's uh, 17 verses here. So let's see. This is 9b. So uh, verse 9, it starts a new paragraph. So um, let's go here. We'll go ahead and read the whole entirety of the chapter since it's not a long chapter. So First uh, Samuel chapter 7 and verse 1 says, and the men of Kirjath Jerum came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill and sanctified Eleazar his son to keep the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass while the ark abode in Kirjath Jerum that the time was long, for it was twenty years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. And Samuel spake unto to all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord. So that's a good thing to do, to prepare our hearts unto the Lord, and saved people can do that each and every day. So let's prepare our hearts unto the Lord, as uh, um, he says here to, to the nation of Israel, which um, born-again believers can also prepare uh, their hearts unto the Lord and serve him only so we can do that also serve the Lord only and not um, other things and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines so of course we know this is speaking the nation of Israel but in spiritual and practical ways we can do these things uh, then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtaroth and serve the Lord only and Samuel said gather all Israel to Mizpah and I will pray for you unto the Lord and they gathered together to Mizpah, and drew water, and poured it out before the Lord, and fasted on that day, and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a sucking 
lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near the bat uh, to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines, and then discomfited them, and they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah, and pursued the Philistines, and smote them, until they came under Bethkar. Then Samuel took a stone, and set it between Mizpah and Shin, and called the name of that Ebenezer, or the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hither too hath the Lord helped us. And that's part of a hymn uh, there. Um, what's the name of that hymn? Okay, now I can't remember it. Um, but uh, you know which one I'm talking about. Um, oh, Come come Thou Fount. Yeah, Come Thou Fount is, uh, part, uh, is part, uh, one of the um, stanzas in that uh, particular hymn there. And verse 13 says, So the Philistines were subdued, and they came no more into the coast of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. And the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel, from Ekron even unto Gath. And the coast thereof did Israel deliver out of the hands of the Philistines. And there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. And he went from year to year in circuit to Bethel and Gilgal and Mizpah and judged Israel in all those places. And his return was to Ramah, for there was his house. And there he judged Israel, and there he built an altar unto the Lord. So that's the entirety of chapter 7. And then it continues on in chapter 8 there and forward. So... Now that we know the context of what's going on here, let's read the topic here for today. Again, it's titled, The Lord Hears. And 1 Samuel 7, 9b says, Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him, and so on and so forth. And then the author today is LP. That would be the initials for LP. That would be Brother Luke Putnam. And he's from Northwest Bible Baptist Church in Elgin, Illinois. So... Let's get into this topic here today. And he writes here, says here, Samuel had an effectual and fervent prayer life, right? And it would be good for all of us to have an effectual and fervent prayer life. It is quite a testimony that one man cried out to God for an entire nation, and the Lord heard him. Hallelujah. So, And he says, I believe the greatest influence on Samuel's prayer life was his mother's example Samuel means God has heard, which was a living testament of Hannah's effective prayer life. She then promised the Lord, as long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. For Samuel 1, 28b, one would think Samuel heard his mother's prayer and saw her surrendered life. Uh, his own response to God's voice was, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Verse 8. As the end of chapter, uh, at the end of chapter three, it is said of Samuel that all of Israel knew that he was the established prophet of the Lord. Verse twenty. Much later in his ministry, we arrive at our text verse. Here, Samuel interceded for an entire nation, and the Lord heard him. As it has been said, he who kneels before God can stand before anyone. Samuel's testimony concerning prayer was, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. So, for Samuel 12:23 b God used a praying Samuel to stand in the gap for his generation, but it all traced back to a kneeling mother who consistently went to the throne of grace. What will be the influence of your prayer life? Hmm. Uh, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, James 5:16b, And he concludes with this, I think moms, grandmothers, sisters, wives, and uh, daughters too. So, amen. So thank the Lord for uh, praying moms and grandmothers and sisters and wives and daughters and all that. So it's good to have a good fervent prayer life and 
pray for others and Lord and, and intercede there um, and you can even um, pray for the entire nation and um, that they would repent and turn to the Lord and all that so whoever you're, pr you're praying for today make sure it's fervent and constant and keep on praying even if nothing gets uh, answered right yet the Lord is um, listening and hears so let's keep on praying pray without ceasing and all that so praise God all right so let's continue to do that even if nothing's getting uh, answered or um, whatever right away keep on praying so all right so that's the end of that topic there good little topic from the Baptist bread today and now let's go ahead and open up the daily strength volume 2 book written by Douglas D Stoffer and Andrew V Ray and we have reached day 5, uh, 115 Tuesday and we're on this topic of forgiveness this week and today's topic is titled God's readiness to forgive and Psalm 86 5 says for thou Lord art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee so that's Psalm 86 5 so let's look at the entirety of the psalm and see who the psalmist is if there is a particular psalmist here for this Psalm, so Psalm, what was it, 80, 86, so Psalm 86, all right, Psalm 86, so Psalm 86 is a prayer of David, so let's read this in its entirety, and then we'll get into the topic here, the introductory thoughts, so Psalm 86 is a Psalm of David, and it says here, bow down thine ear, O Lord, Hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O thou my God, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble I will call upon thee, for thou wilt hear or answer me, excuse me, will answer me. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and doest wondrous things, Thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered me, or excuse, excuse me, delivered my soul from the lowest hell. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the assemblies of Violent men have sought after my soul, and have not set thee before them. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion, and gracious, long-suffering, and plenteous, in mercy and truth. Praise God for that. O turn unto me, and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant, and save the son of thy handmaid. Shew me a token of good, that they which hate me may see it, and be ashamed because thou, Lord, hast holpen me and comforted me. So that's the entirety of the psalm there, Prayer of David. So, all right. And I believe that's uh, Lord praying there, a little prophecy of uh, Jesus Christ praying there in the Garden of Gethsemane to God the Father. So, all right. And uh, now let's go ahead and get into the topic here again, titled, What is the Forgiveness of Sins? And some, um, or no, that was yesterday, sorry. We're on uh, day 115, Tuesday. God's readiness to forgive. Psalm 86, 5 again says, For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. And now, introductory thoughts. It says here, God cannot allow man to simply sin with impunity because of his holy and righteous character that demands a righteous judgment yet the bible proclaims that the lord is good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon him uh, 
Psalm 86, 5 again, it is important to realize that the Lord's ultimate desire involves his desire to forgive a man's sins, right? Therefore, the key to a relationship with the Creator involves trusting wholly in God's provision. That's entirely, that's W-H-O-L-L-Y, holy in God's provision. Um, this is what the Bible means by the Lord is, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Second Peter 3, 9, punishment for sin is death, and man's singular hope rests in God's mercy. Uh, based upon this readiness to forgive, the Father sent his only begotten Son to shed his blood for the sins of the whole world. Salvation is not the end of all forgiveness uh, even after uh, salvation the lord desires for man to remain in close fellowship with him but sin separates the bible all again holds the key uh, when it says that the lord is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness first john 1 9 we are clean at salvation but must look to god for an ongoing cleanness right so and we still know that this flesh wants to sin and is not uh, redeemed yet until we get our new glorified uh, bodies. So we got to tend with the flesh and to always keep it crucified and to allow the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to work and rule and reign in our hearts and our minds and our thoughts and everything. And to uh, submit to the Lord fully all the time. And of course, it is uh, not an easy thing to do. It does take work. So, but. Of course, that doesn't keep your soul saved. The Holy Spirit uh, keeps your soul um, saved until the day of redemption. But we should always strive to be Christ-like and do what the Lord uh, would have us to do and His will and not our own and the things that He says to do and not just do whatever we want. So, amen. Be obedient and all that. So, all right. So, hope we continue on to do that even to this day. And so that was a good introductory thoughts there. And now devotional thoughts. And this is for children. It says read Luke 23, 39-43. So let's look at that really quick here. Psalm, or excuse me, Luke 23. Let's look at that, Luke 23. And might have to get some context here. So Luke 23. All right. Luke 23. Alright, so we won't read the entire chapter because it's a lengthy one. So what was it? Luke 23, 39-43. So uh, 39 uh, starts a new paragraph here. So we'll start there and encourage you to read uh, all of 23 on your own time. And so it says here, this is uh, uh, Jesus on the cross, the, him being crucified and all that. And so verse 39 says, and one of the malefactors which were hung or hanged railed on him saying if thou be christ save thyself and us but the other answering rebuked him saying dost not thou fear god seeing thou art in the same condemnation and we indeed justly for we receive the due reward of our deeds but this man had done nothing amiss and he said unto jesus lord remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom and Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And in verse 44 says, And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour, and the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst, and so on and so forth. So that's um, the thief on the cross being saved and asking the Lord to remember him when he... Uh, enters paradise and so the one repented the other one didn't and so that's that uh, um, there and now let me uh, see here so we read Luke 23 39 through 43 and it says here one of the two thieves crucified with Jesus mocked him the other thief on the cross recognized that he himself had sinned and confessed that Jesus was Lord and had done nothing wrong uh, Jesus was dying for the sins of the world, including those of these two men. When the thief asked for the Lord to remember him, Jesus was ready to forgive and did so. Hallelujah. So if the thief on the cross can be saved by just trusting Jesus alone 
and not doing anything else, so can you. So, and uh, amen. So nothing required but trusting Jesus and believing on him with all your heart, soul, and mind and all that. So that was for children, and of course I replied to everybody. And now for everyone, it says, How could the Lord be a God of justice and forgive a sinner at the same time when the sinner is undeserving? How does the word covered bring justice and forgiveness into agreement? If God is ready to forgive man when he sins against the Lord, how should we be uh, when forgiving others, right? Uh, why do we find it so hard to forgive others when they wrong us? Because we like to hold the grudges and and uh, not forgive. And, of course, we forgive for a while. And then all of a sudden we can't just keep it behind our backs like the Lord does. And we tend to, uh, it tends to come back into our mind. And then, we, and then we take back that forgiveness. And then we continue to be mean and hateful to them and, and all that. When we should um, remain for forgiving. And uh, so uh, we got to remember that. All right. So that's for everyone. And now for prayer thoughts, it says, ask the Lord to help you to be ready to forgive. And then ask God to show you his mercy and forgiveness. And so then the hymns today, the one from the book is titled, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. So that would be the second one. And then the first one uh, we'll do right now. And it sounds a little challenging, but we'll try it and see how it goes. Um, so I had to go into um, a different... Uh, place to find the instrumental for this one so i will let you listen to it first and then we will try to sing it so let me grab the book here and this one is titled my or excuse me uh this first one is titled may i resolve with all my heart and this is another one of these the resolve of the saint hymns a spiritual song written by ann Steele. 1716 to 1778 and she is writing as theodosia and then lowell mason who lived from 1792 to 1872 and then there is a little uh story here a little thing here at the bottom of the page uh, after the hymn so let me do this let you listen to it and then we'll go right there That's how it sounds, and we'll go ahead and uh, try to sing it the best I can with the instrumental. So here we go. All right, one, two, three. Ah, wretched souls who strive in vain, slaves to the world and slaves to sin, a nobler toil may I sustain. A nobler satisfaction win. May I resolve with all my heart, with all my powers to serve the Lord, nor from his precepts their depart. Whose service is a rich reward? Oh, be his service all my joy around. Let my example shine till others love the best employ and join in. So divine. Be this the purpose of my soul, my solemn, my 
determined choice to yield to his supreme control and in his kind commands rejoice. Oh, may I never faint nor tire nor wandering leave his sacred ways. Great God, accept my soul's desire and give me strength to live thy praise. Amen. Well, pretty good hymn there. Alright, so now let me read you the story here at the bottom of the page. It says here, preferring uh, an anonymity uh, Steele's works were published exclusively under a pen name, uh, yet heaven kept a perfect record. The inscription upon her resting place reads, Silent the uh, lyre and dumb the tuneful tongue that sung on earth her great Redeemer's praise. But now in heaven she joins the angelic song in more Harmonious, more exalted lays. Hmm. So that's what it said on her uh, um, resting place. That's what it reads there. All right, now let me read you the or give you the references here for each stanza. So stanza one, we have John eight thirty four and Hebrews eleven twenty five, and then stanza two, we have First Samuel twelve twenty four and Psalm one nineteen ten, and then stanza three is Matthew five sixteen and Matthew. 9:38, stanza four is uh, James 24, or, oh Jeremiah, I think that's uh, yeah, not James, Jeremiah 24:15, uh, and uh, and then Psalm 119, verse 162. I think that's Jeremiah. It's J S. I'm not sure what the initials for that. It's either Jeremiah or Joshua. It could be Joshua. So it's one of those uh, old uh, Testament uh, um, books there. Might have been, I think it might be Joshua or uh, Jeremiah. I think it's Joshua, actually. So uh, that's for uh, stanza four. And then stanza five, we have Galatians 6, 9, and Psalm 119, verse 28. So, and uh, I want to see something here. Uh, yeah, so yesterday there was a, a uh, reference to uh, Joshua 24, 15 yesterday. And I think I said it was James, but it was actually Joshua from uh, one of the references from... Uh, stanza two from yesterday's hymn, who's on the Lord's side, so I apologize about uh, that to there. But that's actually Joshua 24, 15 from um, stanza uh, one there, um, from who is on the Lord's side from yesterday. So I correct uh, myself there and giving that reference. So, all right, so that's um, the first hymn for today. And now let's go back, way back to the beginning of the hymn book here. And way back to hymn 31, and do this hymn. So let me turn that off there. And let's go back here to this one. Make sure I find the right one here. All right, so, so which one did I? Have here on here. Alright, so I don't even know which one was. Alright, which one was it? Okay, so now I can't even find it. <laughs> That one. It wasn't that one. Oh, here it is. Aha, uh -huh, I found it. All right. So there it is. All right. I found it. <clears throat> okay. So put that back there and turn the volume back up. All right. So here we go. So I'll give you this one. All right. So this is Hymn 31 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. And this one's titled, Praise My Soul, 
the King of Heaven. And this is one of these Praise Unto God hymns, a, a psalm written by Henry F. Light. And that's L-Y-T-E, 1793 to 1847. And then Sir John Goss, 1800 to 1880. So there is a story here at the bottom. So let me uh, press play and we'll try to sing along with this one the best we can. So... says here in stanza four our frail as summer's flower we flourish blows the wind and it is gone but while mortal mortals rise and perish god endures unchanging on praise him praise him praise him praise him praise the high eternal one so that's uh from the hymn book there and of course uh the one in the hymn book is a little different than the one um, that's uh, on the YouTube channel so maybe we'll try uh, to uh, sing it uh, that way here so let's go ahead and uh, try to sing sing it how it's worded in the book so again let me do this again we'll sing it how it's worded in the book here and try to sing it best we can that way so here we go and try it this way here all right. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven, to His feet Thy tribute bring. Ran ransom healed, restored, forgiven. Who like me his praise should sing? Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise the 
everlasting King. Praise Him for His grace and favor to our fathers in distress. Praise Him still the same forever, slow to chide and swift to bless. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, glorious in His faithfulness. Father, like He tends and spares us, well, our feeble frame He knows. In His hands He gently bears us, rescues us, from all our foes. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, widely as His mercy flows. Frail as summer's flowery flourish blows the wind and it is gone. But while Mortals rise and perish, God endures unchanging on. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise the High Eternal One. All right, let's go back here a little bit. Angels help us to adore Him, ye behold Him face to face. Sun and moon bow down before Him, dwellers all in time and space. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise, him, praise with us the God of grace. Amen. So that's how it is in the uh, hymnal there. A little different uh, uh, with the last uh, part here, the praise and praise him, or is in the um, the YouTube video. It's Alleluia, Alleluia uh, there. So a little bit different in the book from the YouTube uh, um, instrumental there. All right, so now let me read you the story here at the bottom. It says here, uh, described as a most gifted poet, the hymn writer and pastor, Henry F. Light, has stirred centuries of souls with his precious lines, uh, forged of great suffering, the loss of his father as an infant, and his mother, a few years hence, left Henry orphaned at age nine, while comforting a dying clergyman, both men discovered in the scriptures their lack of hope. Uh, together they sought and found uh, forgiveness. Light would continue his life now in great peace and fervent service to his master. Beset by ailing frame, Light's eyes uh, dr drifted off toward the eternal rest, penning in his final days. The beloved hymn, Abide With Me, Fast Falls the Even Tide. So, amen. All right, so that's the story there. And now the references here. Most of these are from Psalm 103. So here we go. Stanza 1, we have Psalm 103, verses 1 through 2. And then Psalm 103, verses 3 through 4. Stanza 2 is Psalm 103, 6 through 7. And Psalm 103, 8 through 9. Stanza 3 is Psalm 113, or 103, 13. And then stanza 4 is Psalm 103, 15. And Psalm 103.17. And then stanza 5 is Psalm 103.20 and Psalm 103.21. So those are the references there, all from this uh, book of Psalm 103. So, all right. So that's the end of the hymns for today. And now let me go put this back to tomorrow's hymn. Put this there. And put that aside. And we'll do the scripture songs one more time. And then we'll do some prayer cards. We'll actually do the prayer cards first. And then we'll do the 
uh, scripture songs after that. So, all right. So this first prayer card here is from Brother Chris and Sister Lori Apedale. And this is the uh, front of their prayer card there. This was just put out on the um, out for um, people to grab at the Bible Baptist Church uh, the other day. So that's the front of their prayer card. And then the back here, this is the back of their prayer card. So you can take a screenshot of that and then flip it around. So this is Brother Chris and Sister Lori Apedale, Missionaries to Amazing Grace um, Mission, and where they go to these different fairs around the country, around the United States, and do um, work at the fairs, uh, getting the gospel out and all that, and at these uh, different fairs around uh, the states. And it says uh, here in this passage from John 4.35, it says, Look on the fields, for they are white all ready to harvest so that's that and then the back here it's uh gives their information again chris and Lori apedale missionaries to amazing grace mission and their number is 858-829-5214 and then their email is um r l a uh or r l apedale and so that's the initials for um uh, them r l apedale and that's at gmail.com. And if you want to know how to spell their last name, that's uh, A-P-E-D-A-I-L-E. So that's uh, the email there. And then the website there is uh, www.agmfairs.org. And then mission and support address is Amazing Grace Mission, uh, P.O. Box 289, Dayton, Tennessee, 37321. And then that number is 800-524-4018. So that's their information there on their prayer card. So, all right, let's try to put that there. And then next we have uh, the Wilson family. Uh, this is a um, different Caleb Wilson, not the Caleb Wilson that goes to the Bible Baptist Church. This is a whole different Caleb Wilson and his family. And um, this is the front of their prayer card there. So that's their, uh, him and his family. And then the back of the prayer card there has the information. So you can take a screenshot there. And they're um, uh, missionaries to Papua New Guinea. And it says, carrying the gospel of Christ to the islands of Papua New Guinea. And so another uh, couple there with their family. And it says here, uh, Brother Caleb Wilson and his family say, pray, pray for us as we preach Christ. Disciple believers, establish local churches, and give God the glory. And then we have Acts 20, 24 says, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And so that's the passage there from Acts 20, 24. And then the sending church is Mount Calvary Baptist Church. P.O. Box 1372, Roanoke, Alabama, 36274. And that's Pastor Ricky Emery. And then the support address is Macedonia World Baptist uh, Missions, P.O. Box 519, um, Brazelton, Georgia, 30519. And then their contact information is uh, Papua New Guinea phone number is plus 675. 79678463 and then the WhatsApp is the same number there on WhatsApp and then the email is Caleb Wilson at mwbm.org and then their YouTube channel is uh, just above down under that's the name of the YouTube channel there so that's their information brother Caleb and his family and then we have next uh, uh, brother Lawson and his family uh, missionaries to Brazil so this is their prayer card there. So that's them, him and his family. Um, so that's them in the front. And then the back here has the information on the back of the prayer card. So it says here, pre, uh, please pray for the Lawson family, missionaries to Brazil. And it says, turning the world upside down, Acts 17, 6. And then the back of the prayer card, we have their information. Correspondence is Brian and Jessica Lawson, 313-406. 7522 and then we got here www.lawsons2brazil.com and then their email address is lawsons2brazil at gmail.com and then they're sending churches Silvery Lane Baptist Church 
24949 Haas, uh, Haas Street, that's H-A-S-S, -S, Haas Street, Dearborn Heights, Michigan, 48127. And then the number there is 313-278-1588. And that's SilveryLaneBaptist.com. And uh, Brother Chris Staub is the pastor there. And he's one of the men that write devotions for the Baptist bread there. So you've heard his name before there. So that's the address for the Sending Church. And then the mission board is a Word for the World, P.O. Box 849, Rossville, Georgia, 30741. And that number is 706-866-8826. And then the website there is www.wftw. BM.org, and then it gives some information about uh, um, uh, Ron Donia. Um, it says here is a state in the southern region of the Amazon bordering the country of Bolivia, and then Jai, Jai per, Perenia, a population over uh, 130,000, is a city that is centrally located in Ron Donia, uh, Jai Perenia has a heart-shaped island and is commonly called the heart of Rondonia. Uh, Jai Parena is also the, in the heart of God and the Lawson family. We plan to reach the heart of the people with the gospel and plant a church in the heart of Rondonia. So, amen. So that's their prayer letter, prayer, prayer card there. And then finally we have uh, Brother Haley and his family. Uh, missionaries to Belgium so this is their prayer card and that's the front of it and then the back here we have the back of the prayer card there so I try to keep it still so you can get a screenshot of that so they're missionaries to Belgium and this is brother Junior Haley and his family and it says here in Psalm 116 12 what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me and then the back here we have contact information is Junior and Lord Laura Dana uh, Haley, P.O. Box uh, 93, Bassett, VA, 24055. And then the number there is 276-226-5025. And then that's Junior Haley at MB, or excuse me, at, uh, so Junior Haley at MWBM.org. And then www.gentbaptistchurch.org. And then their sending church is North Side Baptist Church, 8911 uh, Ferry Stone Park uh, Highway, uh, Bassett, VA, 24055, Pastor Brandon Dup uh, DuPont, 276-627-0292. Uh, and then their support address is MWBM, P.O. Box 519 uh, Brazelton, Georgia, 30517. I believe I just gave you that information there on the last prayer card. Uh, so that was 706-654-2818. And then that's www.mb, or excuse me, www.mwbm.org. And then we have Luke 10.2 says, Therefore say un, uh, uh, said he unto them, The harvest truly is plenteous, Excuse me, um, let me read that. Uh, Therefore said he unto them, that's Jesus speaking, I believe, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. And then it says here, that's Luke 10.2, uh, 10, and then ministering to people across the kingdom of Belgium as church planters working out of the city of uh, Gent. That's G-H-E-N-T. -G and then again, the Haley's Missionaries to Belgium. So, amen. So that's the last prayer card there for today. And now let's go ahead and do the scripture song one more time. And then we'll wrap it up after that. All right. So I'm going to turn this power back on because it uh, turned off on me because it took a little longer than normal. So here we go. All right. Okay, so so just give me a minute here, and we'll do yesterday's scripture song, and then today's again. So. <clears throat>
All right, so yesterday was the, the uh, 27th. All right, so here we go. Sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty one more time. Hebrews 2, 9. But, but we see, see Jesus, Jesus, who was made a little, a little lower than, than the, the angels, angels for, for the, the suffering, suffering of death, death crowned with, with glory and honor, that he, by the grace, grace of God, should, should taste, taste death every man. That's right. We see Jesus, we see Jesus, crowned with glory, glory and honor, was made a little lower than Lower than the angels For the suffering of death We see Jesus We see Jesus Crowned with glory Glory and honor That he by the grace of God should taste death for every man with glory, glory and honor. We see Jesus, we see Jesus crowned with glory, glory and honor. Praise the Lord for that. Proverbs 12, 21. There shall, there shall no, no evil happen to the just, just but the, the wicked shall, shall be filled with mischief. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. All right. Well, that'll be about it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's topic for the Baptist bread and the scripture song. And then the Daily Strength Volume 2 uh, has no topic on Wednesdays or Sundays. So we'll just uh, give you the passage there and then uh, do the one hymn for tomorrow. Might pick another hymn. Since there's only one, we'll see how that goes. So, all right. So tomorrow is the 29th, and Psalms 91 verses 1 through 2 are the passages for the scripture song. And then we'll look at Psalms 91 to see who the, uh, the psalmist is there. So it says here in verses 1 through 2, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. So, amen. All right, so that's the scripture song for tomorrow. And then the Baptist bread topic for tomorrow is titled The Grocery List for Wednesday, May 29th. And we have 2 Samuel 17, 27 to 29. So we'll go over uh, that uh, particular chapter of 2 Samuel. And tomorrow's author is Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. So I'll read you what he wrote there on that topic of the grocery list. And then uh, the Daily Strength Volume 2 book. We are continuing on through this week of forgiveness. And tomorrow is church night. No devotional, but we have uh, Psalm 130, verse 3 and 4. And uh, I believe that uh, that was in the um, hymn book for the references for today. So we'll look at Psalm 130 tomorrow its entirety and read these passages here including verses 3 and 4 um, on this topic of forgiveness so that's for tomorrow day 116 church night so that's that and then the one hymn that we'll be singing tomorrow is titled i want that mountain so um I think that this has been sung before or somebody sang this as a special something uh, in the congregational uh, singing time for special music so this is another one of these the resolve of the saint hymns a spiritual song and this is hymn 756 in the book written by bill harvey 
who lived in the 20th century. So he's the only um, hymn writer for this one. No story here, but there is a copyright for this particular hymn here. So I'll give you that. So that's that. And then we'll maybe pick out a second hymn uh, for tomorrow and maybe do some more prayer cards. So we'll see how that goes. So let me grab this again here and show you the cover of the book. So this is the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. This is the dark blue cover here. And there's also a brown cover. And then there's a uh, lighter bluish grayish cover. So those three different covers there. And then there's also a leather bound edition. And then a spinal edition. I believe that's still available. That's uh, like this here with the side um, backing with, uh, replaced with this instead of uh, instead of this, so this is replaced with with uh, this type of uh, side backing there. So, however you want to order it, you can go on and get a copy of both, or however how many other copies you want to get of these hymn books. So that's um, the different um, ways that they're that and different colors that they come in. So that's that, and then uh, the Daily Strength Volume Two book. This is the cover for that, and there's four volumes to this series of. Um, devotional books and all these books including the hymn book are available at melodypublications.com that's the website there you can order those and then the scripture song uh, book and CDs should be available online at www.dailyscripturesongs.com that's brother Dean and sister Patty Runyon's website and they are missionaries to uh, Port Kaituma, Guyana so it doesn't look like they'll be going back there um, at least he won't anytime soon uh, maybe to visit if uh, his health keeps up so um uh, pray for him and all the pain that he's been going through that the lord will continue to uh, raise him up and help him to keep going while he's on this earth and for sister patty and uh, as she cares for him and i know she's planning on going back to port kaituma for about a month uh, at the end of june beginning of july to go help with bbs and some other things uh, over there and pray for that mi uh, mission work to continue on uh, when they aren't able to do it fully anymore so pray for them. And uh, there's a big group going over in July to help with VBS. I think there's like 19 people, Brother Dean said in the prayer letter there. So I knew some of those are Brother Blake and Sister Haley Muscat and their little one and a group of 10 that they said they're bringing. So I'm not sure who else is coming along, but 19 people, that'll be quite a quite a group of people. So pray pray that they all get along and, and uh, that the work uh, would go on there and that they'll be able to help with the VBS and reach those children with the gospel and all that. So um, so pray for that. And that's the first week of July, I believe, is when they're doing their VBS. And then, of course, uh, VBS uh, and um, Bible Baptist Church in Deland, Florida. That's coming up in July. I think it's the first uh, week of July or second week. So pray for that. And um, that will be um, good there. So I'll give you that information tomorrow because I don't have the um per uh card on me right yet so it's uh out of my reach so we'll do that tomorrow um with some other prayer cards so amen all right so pray for them and that's uh the information there again that's www.dailyscripturesongs.com is their website there and then the baptist bread devotional book this is the cover for this month and next month so if you order now you'll most likely get the one for july and august and it comes in a box of 10, 12.95 every other month. You'll get a cop or a box of these, and that's uh, available to get a subscription going by going to baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And that second website has other books available to order, as you see fit to check out that website there. All right, and then the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God. This is the first book we need to be getting into and reading it and studying it and searching the scriptures and showing thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth and going to God in prayer and seeking his praise, uh, face in everything and asking him to guide you and direct you in all truth. And as you're growing and learning to live more Christ-like each and every day and having a good, solid relationship with the Lord, and all that so that's the bible there and then the other book i've been going through on the other broadcasts i've been doing separate broadcast from this one and this is a book of genesis book this is an old um book here and I'm not sure if it's still in print or not but uh, this was a devotional type of commentary part of the christ honoring commentary series written by my pastor brother james w knox and uh, most of his books can be found online 
at www.jameswnox.org or go straight to the store part of the website, which is store.jameswnox.org to look up his books and other materials and preaching um, and teaching of God's Word. And then the YouTube channel where you can watch the video presentations of his sermons and sermons from other men uh, throughout the Bible Baptist Church is uh, James Knox Sermons YouTube channel. So that's the church YouTube channel there. And again, this is the cover of the book there. And today uh, we're going to be covering for the 28th this topic titled Typical Lessons from the Sacrifice of Isaac. And over the last three days we did this uh, three-part series of messages on um, the offering of Isaac. So part one, two, and three from the last three days. So if you missed any of those, you can go back and watch those either on Facebook or YouTube uh, page or channel that I have. So, and that is uh, Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting or typing in Baptist Bread Broadcast to look me up that way and then like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. So however you watch the um, uh, presentation of uh, these uh, broadcasts there, either on Facebook or YouTube. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord for these men that write these books and these devotionals and their work. So pray for them and their ministries out there. So, all right. So that's that. And that's again that book there. So, um, and then um, also, if you like to hear um, books being read to you, auto um, books, um, and they're, Christian, they're all Christian stories, so Christian uh, heroes of the faith and missionary stories that I read, and been working through the book on Eric Liddell by YWAM Publishing Company, and written by Janet and Jeff Binge, and that's Eric Liddell, a little story about him, and that's part of the um, Christian Heroes Then and Now series, and you can find that book on ywampublishing.com. I believe that's the website there, so I'll be reading another chapter here soon and putting that up on my uh, podcast there, and that's uh, God's Messenger Lighthouse Podcast on Spotify or iHeartRadio or the two platforms. I know it's up uh, for sure, so check that out if you like to hear audio books being read to you. So, and you can also get copies here uh, for your own um, collection of books. So, amen uh, for the, uh, those uh, heroes of the faith. And... Uh, all right, well, that'll be about it for today, so thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now.